You're pointing a knife at me, Tommy. Tommy, don't point the knife at me. Hey everyone, Genome here, coming to you with the next episode in my movie review series. Um, this has no particular tie-in with any other film, you know, series or trilogy or nothing like that. This is kind of a standalone film, but, oh, there's always a but, right? Uh, this movie is actually directed by uh, Tom McLaughlin. Uh, you might remember him from uh, Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, Date with an Angel, many other movies of such caliber. You also might remember him from the interview I did with him about last year, about a year ago, I guess. And um, <clears throat> technical issues were notwithstanding. It was a great interview and a great insight into a really interesting guy. And so after basically researching for the, the interview and all that, I came across a movie that he'd done that I'd never heard of. And not that I'm a big movie file or anything, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it always bears. When you find a director whose work you like, you tend to want to watch whatever it is they do. And um, <clears throat> this one, sadly... Never actually got a theatrical release. Well, it's time to give some shine to uh, this hidden gem right there and talk about 2001's The Unsaid. Um, according to uh, director himself, this was actually kind of a darling of the, the film critic crowd and all that. But <clears throat> due to the somewhat controversial i guess we'll call it subject matter it was not given an official release outside of dvd and you know direct direct market release uh here in the u.s but other countries it did so uh you know that's, that's just the breaks that's the way the cookie crumbles different times um but basically this is a vehicle uh that really kind of served up uh, Andy Garcia is, of course, a very serious actor and as a, you know, a fairly prolific producer as well. Dr. Michael Hunter. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> we'll just go ahead and jump right in here. Let me, let me start off saying this. I'm having a real difficult time figuring out how to actually review this. And this is the first time I've really had a problem with this. <clears throat> you know, typically all my reviews have some sort of spoilers in them. In fact, I usually warn you, hey, if you haven't seen this movie, you plan on seeing it in the future, go ahead and stop now, you know, go watch the movie and come back to this video whenever. That's fine. Right. I've already gotten the view. Or you can let it play through on mute and don't listen to it. <clears throat> if it makes you feel better, sorry, I gotta, I've had been really sick the last couple of days, so my throat's, my voice is kind of going in and out, but... um so I, I normally say that, but a lot of times that's on like a horror film or some film that a lot of people have seen. You know, everyone has probably seen Tron. Everyone's probably seen at least one Friday the 13th, right? So while I don't give away all the spoilers of the, of the movie, usually, you know, there's not a whole lot to them to spoil, right? You know, <laughs> bad guy goes into camp, bad guy kills a bunch of people in camp, etc. You know, there's different things moving on around that, but that's getting a little bit away from the actual movie at hand. But what makes this difficult for me is if I say anything almost about this movie it would be a spoiler because this is a very cerebral film right <clears throat> there's a lot of nuance here there's a lot of i hate to use the word innuendo but there's a lot of innuendo here there's manipulation do you why what dream about your son there's you know persecution redemption there's a lot of different things wrapped up in this and due to the nature of the film if i really talk too much about it it's uh it's gonna be difficult but that also makes it difficult for me because uh you know i don't get to talk about the characters too much and i don't get to talk about motivations like i like to do or at least attempt to like to do right so I'll try to make this as general as possible and much more necessarily vague than it usually am. And I won't have nearly as many clips uh, interspersed out throughout this review as I normally do. So just want to kind of let you know about that in, uh, ahead of time. <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the main characters. You know, actually, no, let me give a really brief synopsis of the plot, what little I can give you. And then uh, then we'll move on to like pros and cons and I'll talk about the characters and that and all. So... Without giving anything away in this movie, 
this movie centers around basically two people, right? And uh, that is the character of Michael Hunter, played by Andy Garcia, and uh, Thomas Caffey, played by Vincent Cartheiser. So, I mean, there's there's several other you know important characters in this film, but this this film really revolves around these two, and it's it's a, it's a kind of a rich dynamic of what's going on here. Uh, they each see each other. Um, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What the hell kind of an analogy is that? But I mean, they each see the other person somewhat in themselves, right? They, they're like the clouded mirror, you know, the mirror darkly. Or the still water darkly, you know, through the reflections and all that other nonsense. Uh, you know, bad allegory notwithstanding. It's, it's like there are two sides of almost the same coin, but on different ends of the spectrum. So what I mean by that? Well, I can't really tell you. But I can tell you this. Andy Garcia plays... Um, a professor slash author slash psychologist uh kind of in that reverse order though he used to be a practicing psychologist and after a certain tragedy in his life he kind of internalizes everything delves inward and becomes a writer and a sometimes guest speaker we simply ask a question and the subject responds but often what is not said is far more important than what is said. As he tries to work through his demons over the years, right? And Thomas, or Tommy, is a young man <clears throat> in, in a boy's shelter, basically, who witnessed a very really horrific crime when he was a boy involving his parents. <clears throat> and so now he's basically a ward of the state. And as a favor to a colleague, uh, Dr. Hunter has agreed to <clears throat> help examine Tommy because Tommy is not exhibiting any of the normal signs from someone who had witnessed this kind of trauma in his youth, and he seems just too well-adjusted. The position of her eyes, the rhythm of her breathing, these are all nonverbal cues to the subconscious, to the unsaid. And since he's getting ready to be released, they want to know if it's safe. So... <clears throat> Basically, the whole movie revolves around the shifting dynamic between, you know, who is analyzing who. Uh, Tommy is very bright, and Dr. Hunter is also very intelligent, but he's also kind of a broken man. So he's having trouble divulging or diverging one reality with another. And once again, I just can't tell you because it kind of will spoil the whole. This movie's <clears throat> one big spoiler if I talk about it. Much more than I already am. But my dancing around now is standing. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of back and forth. And there's another, there's a child of Dr. Hunter's who, who kind of gets mixed up in this. It's kind of a, a, a strange triangle. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it just comes to a rather, not so much stark, but a rather, I don't even want to say boisterous. It just comes to a conclusion that makes sense, but it might surprise some people. So, man, that was awful vague. I don't know. <laughs> no offense, but uh, what the hell are you talking about? What can I do? When you can't talk about the movie itself without spoiling things, uh, that would be the case. Maybe I'll come back and actually do this movie in like a week or two as on a proper review and just give it all away, give people a chance to see if they want to. But I just I don't want to spoil it for anybody because I really enjoyed this movie. And, um, <clears throat> you know... <clears throat> It's, it's a good testimony to how even people with the best intentions or with a good skill set or people who think they're experts in a certain field can be completely wrong about something. You and your wife blamed each other. Oh, she blamed me. And so did I. And, and disastrously so, right? And then hopefully they can put their life back together afterwards. But, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. And this movie is kind of a... Um, it's kind of a look inside of that. So, <clears throat> yeah, that says nothing at all about the movie, hopefully. That's a little spoiler for you, but I, I suggest you go give it a watch so then we can maybe discuss it in the chat or something or in, in the, the comments. But So let's talk about some pros and cons. <clears throat> um, we'll talk about some cons first, all right? I like to get those out of the way, right? There's not too many in this film, but there's, there's a few, right? Like any film has them. Sometimes... The music was a little bit sappy and kind of like, you know, lifetimey. I hate to use the term. It was just sometimes it was a little bit overly sentimental. I liked the more stark sounds when dealing with issues of 
psychological problems, right? So, so sometimes it was a little bit, you know, purposely tear inducing or whatever. Um, I understand why it's done. It's not incredibly bad or anything like that, but sometimes it kind of, it kind of gray dummy just a little bit. It's like, I like, like to let the images, you know, try to, to tug my heartstrings more than I do like to have the music artificially do it, right? <clears throat> it's a great compliment when music does that, but sometimes it's a little bit over overbearing at times, but I, I mostly like the soundtrack, actually. So don't get me wrong there. Um, real heavy emphasis on strings, that sort of thing, and um, what thing, high C registers and all that. But um, so there's that. There's that. Um, for those looking for a psychological thriller, like along the lines of like, I don't know, Cape Fear or some other nonsense like that, you might be a little disappointed because this is a slower film. This film has very disturbing themes behind it. Uh, they don't completely drive the film. They drive the characters within the film, if that makes any sense at all. But, you know, the, the film does not hover over those, those shock moments for too long, right? It doesn't make it the, the front and center. The front and center are the two main characters in this movie <clears throat> and their dynamic playing off of each other. I'm not your son. No, I know that. Uh, sorry about that. It was hacking and coughing. I didn't think you wanted to hear that. But um, so the movie is a tad slow. Like for those of you with no patience for slower movies, this is not going to be the movie for you, right? This movie makes you want to watch every frame, watch every expression on a face to see if you can pick up a clue of what's going on. It's that kind of movie. It's um, I guess you could call it a slower burn. Um, but you know that kind of thing doesn't really bother me as long as I like the subject matter of the film, which I do in this one. But, you know, for just just a warning out there, if you're expecting a high-octane thriller, that's, this is not it. <gasps> this movie is interspersed with lots of very uncomfortable moments, and not just because of the subject matter. You have, you know, a person who's possibly dangerous, I'm not even going to say who, uh, hanging around people that we know are attached to other main players in the, in, in the movie. So it's just, there's lots of, like, a little disquieting and uncomfortable moments throughout this movie um but it, it is a little bit slower so just a warning there <clears throat> no huge fireworks nothing like that though there is a bit of a car chase in there uh, how about that oh and speaking of cars by the way uh this car looks somewhat familiar kind of like a uh, certain uh red car that was circling around crystal lake a few years before so any other cons? Um, I can't really think of anything. The only other thing I would like, to, I would like to see a little more of Andy Garcia, to be honest with you, because I was really enjoying, um, you know, the cards he was laying down. So, yeah, those two minor nitpicks aside, I can't find too much else wrong with this movie, all right? So let's get on to the pros. This is going to be a much more fun section, right? Aren't they always? Well, some people tune in just to watch you try to trash a movie, but I very rarely do that because I can find enjoyment in just about anything I watch, right? It's just putting your mind in the right place. So let's talk about some pros. Uh, right off the bat, this is extraordinarily well cast. Like everybody seems very natural in these roles. Um, you know, Andy Garcia's Doctor Hunter is well. Let me get to him last because he's really complex. But uh, uh, Doctor Hunter's son, uh, Kyle, you don't see a whole lot of him, but he's well played and uh, he has very expressive eyes, and that's what's very important in scenes like this where he's actually not speaking a lot, right? Oh, you're alive. Oh, Dad, I'm not. Um, uh, Linda uh, Cardellini playing Shelley. Uh, she does really well in her in her role. You know, uh, she seems kind of vulnerable, kind of someone who's also broken, but not really wanting to admit it, uh, but trying to move on with her life. Uh, you know, uh, Terry Polo as uh, Barbara. Uh, that was um, uh, Doctor Hunter's colleague, former student. Um, she plays a interesting role. It's kind of hard to figure out where she's at. Is she like kind of coming on to her former professor, or is it just? It seems platonic later on, but it it, it looks like she's kind of feeling him out during one of these. Uh, there's a diner scene where it looks like she's kind of trying to move in on him a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's not like in a creepy way. You know, she's obviously you know older at this point, but yeah. So it's it's kind of hard to figure out. But she does well. Um, and 
the role she has. She I noticed there was a um, another horror alum in this movie. Well, it's not really a horror movie, but um, Brendan Fletcher actually has a small role in this movie, and I think I last saw him in Freddy vs. Jason uh, as one of the victims, unfortunately for him. They covered him up, Will. They never told us about Freddy because that's how they decided to beat him. Uh, and you got Sam Bottoms as a guy who is in prison. And I can't really say anything else because it ties in with everything. But uh, And he has a kind of a thoughtful role, you know. You don't, once again, see too 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 much of him. But what you do see of him is pretty good. But everyone is, is seems to be cast well, uh, especially the two leads. The two leads here are uh, Vincent Kartheiser, once again, playing uh, Tommy. And he's very good at giving you a bit of the side glance, right? Like, you can look right at this guy, and he's the all-American-looking kid, right? And he looks normal and completely happy and sane, and he can just flick his eyes just a little bit, and something just seems off. But it's not like the loony kind of off. It's the, all of a sudden, he just turns very cold and calculating. Like, he spots a weakness somewhere, and he just hones in on it, razor sharp. So, But he, yeah, once again, he has kind of the, uh, uh, the vaudeville eyes, if you will, right? They uh, they lead things, but they're bright. He's young, right? And he's got stuff to look forward to. Freedom being one of the things to get out of the boys' home, right? So, but the smile can wink on and off, and uh, his attitude can change uh, very, very quickly. And he does it fairly efficiently. You, you really can't believe the performance he's given here. You can believe that he's just this guy who's an innocent guy who's caught up uh, within this really bad situation and. You don't want to believe he's a monster, and he may not be a monster, and who knows what he is. You know, he might not even know what he is, right? So it's, it's left up to the audience to kind of interpret it, which is, <clears throat> I think, a very wise move. But yeah, he's he's very good in the role, and um, you know that leads us up to Doctor Hunter, played by Andy Garcia. Andy is a fine actor, and this movie movie he gets to kind of stretch his uh, dramatic side, right? A lot of downturned eyes and. Um, uh, he can turn on like utter despair within like one second and then turn it right back off again. He does it a few times in this movie, and I caught a few of them. I think I'll show you a clip of it here. In fact, we're not very different at all, you see. And um, <clears throat> he's just so good at it. And. I like this character a lot for a couple different reasons. One, you don't really see it. You don't see the pre-tragedy thing happen to him, but he I can picture him as a really arrogant, know-it-all kind of guy, at least in his profession, right? He knows it all, and I've actually met someone just like him in that same profession. You know, he has people figured out completely, right? There's no, there's no mystery to him anymore, and sometimes... People like that are so blind and arrogant, they can't see what's right in front of their face until it's too late. Upon this realization, it just it destroys him. Not to mention personal tragedy, but it just destroys him completely. And so he's a broken man. Uh, you basically pick up with him like three years after this tragedy, right? And <clears throat> he's just now getting his life somewhat back together, but he's got this huge beard. His hair's kind of uh, grown out. I like the touch, too, um, of seeing him before his next transformation, his redemption arc, I guess. <clears throat> he's driving around a dirty car, right? And he's, you know, unshaven and kind of unkempt. And then you see him like the next day or whatever. <clears throat> he cleans up. He shaves, showers up, washes his car. So it's, it's a nice little uh, uh, chrysalis moment, right? The, the uh, caterpillar has emerged as a beautiful butterfly. Sorry, I had no, I couldn't help myself. But, um, but yeah, he just plays an interesting, good character here, and you can see as the film goes on, he is not still all there. He's still broken in a way, and he's trying to put up a front that he's okay, but he's really not. He's still haunted, tormented at his own blindness and his own arrogance, I'm sure, and his own inability to see the problems that were right in front of his face, right? And, you know, it, it turns out he was the cause of some of it, not knowingly to him, but you know, that never helps you when you're thinking about guilt. So just a really good performance um, by Andy. Um, and some really stark imagery, too. So let's talk about 
<clears throat> some of the shots in this film. There's a lot of like Midwest. You can see some of the Midwest right there in the background, like out in the Kansas prairie lands or whatever. And then you got like uh, you'll intersperse that with the boys' home and you know e- even um, a college campus, right? But you know, as is often in Tom's uh, favor, of course, is there's a very active camera going on. You know, the camera is moving around. It helps set up um, and frame shots in a way that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable with the situation, which is a really nice touch. You have moments where the camera is almost circling the protagonist like a shark, right? It's like a predator of kind. I mean, what do you want, huh? What do you want? What do I want from you? We need to talk about this, Tommy. You agreed to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Okay, I know this is painful. And uh, it really gives the the viewer an idea that something is just not quite right here. So it's it's. I love the camera work. I always have in all those films. Even like One Dark Night, early stuff, it was like that. The camera was very active, and, and there were some interesting shots that we had. This is not the kind of movie that needs anything too flamboyant or splashy or or even all that, you know, particularly, you know, boisterous as far as camera goes. But it... <clears throat> it's done with style and class, and uh, it just adds a, a little bit of something that really helps, right? Um, there are a few flashbacks in this movie, but it doesn't. It's not overly burdened with them. Like some people, some movies get way too caught up in flashbacks, and this one is just a little bit of exposition here and there. But then it just gets right back to what's really going on. So yeah, so it looks it looks really nice. Um, you know, you know what else can you say? Um, it's just a lot more pros and cons in this movie, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's just something very different. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit. This is, once again, very hard to talk about because I can't give away anything. But let me tell you, the ending surprised me. I'm usually, this is my own arrogance, I guess, or whatever. I usually have these kind of things figured out pretty early. I'm a big fan of, like, crime noir books and all that and movies. And so, like, I, uh, I leaned over and told the wife early on. It's like, yeah, this is what happened. And, uh, boy, was I proven wrong at the end. But uh, <laughs> I didn't see it coming. I guess I should have seen it. Uh, I watched it again. I started seeing some of the signs like, oh, I should have picked up on that before. But once again, this is the kind of movie you probably want to watch more than once just to pick up on those kind of things. But uh, it's kind of a powerhouse ending. Um, and uh, it's definitely some shock value there. And um, <clears throat> I don't think it was cause enough to get it banned. But, you know, I can see how it would upset some people because it's, it's a touchy thing. It's a touchy thing. It's a, it's a very sad thing for everyone involved. Uh, you know, this is a fiction. You know it's happened in real life before. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Let's just, let's just say that. We'll leave it there. But, uh, yeah, it's <clears throat> it, – I'd call, call it a satisfying conclusion. You know, what happens when two extremely broken people meet each other? Do they fix each other or do they make themselves worse? We're not really given an answer. You know, uh, we think we are, but – you know, upon reflection, I'm not so sure. But anyway, I let my mind continue to tinker with that for a while. So let's just get into <clears throat> how I would grade this movie and what I recommend you watching it. Um, I'm going to give this movie a four out of five stars, all right? This is a thinking person's movie. This is – a lot of times it's harder to watch a slower movie sometimes, you know what I mean? More than one time. So you can pick up on things, but this movie is definitely worth it to pick up on things. And if you really want to get fun with it, watch it with uh, director's commentary on if you have that on the DVD. And get some more insight into what's going on. Um, it's just a really, really good movie. I love it. Um, it's it's That sounds like such a cop-out, but it just is, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a shame that no one's really heard of this here too often, you know, except for regular film files or big fans of Mr. McLaughlin's work. It's it's just so refreshing. Agreed. It's, I mean, this, like I said, this low-key low, low key fireworks, it's no overly, ridiculously pantomime performances and nothing like that. It's just a good, solid flick with some really disturbing undertones kind of woven within that tapestry, right? It's, it's, it's so hard to explain until you've actually seen it. And like any good movie... It makes you think about it long after the film is over, right? I've been thinking about it for a couple of days now, trying to think of things that I didn't pick up when I first saw it, or something else new that's occurred to me. And that's always a mark of a good film to me. Um, <clears throat> it's it's good to see a film that can 
focus on psychological issues and not run into the trope of a huge body count, right? I mean, this is not like a slasher of all. This is not, like I said, the bodies aren't going to be dropping all the place, but there's some violence in this movie. Um, but I think it's not really done to shock or horrify for the most part. I think it's just done to accent what can happen to even innocent people or good people if the circumstances are wrong. Um <clears throat> It's a good case study. There might be a little bit of, you know, uh, pseudo-psychology in there. I don't know. I know they talk about transference and all that, and I'm sure it's all, you know, um, well and good in circles. I'm sure that the experts scoff at uh, <laughs> you know, layman's terms like that. But, I mean, um, I don't know. I just really enjoyed the film, and I definitely would highly recommend it. I'm, I'm going to give it definitely a four out of five stars. The um, only things I maybe could have improved is the pace was it just a tiny bit slow in some spots, and sometimes the music just really was a little bit too sappy for me. Um, just minor nitpicks aside, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of hard to find. I couldn't seem to find it in any streaming services, but I only looked on like two or three. So, you know, a more extensive thorough search would probably do you better, but I needed to pull clips anyway, so I just went ahead and got the DVD. Um, if none of you have seen this, like especially my regular viewers, and you want to see it and can't find it for yourself, let me know. I'll send it to you so you can give it a view for yourself because um, I think it deserves a lot more recognition than it has. And <clears throat> I know I just recommend it to anyone who likes a thinking person's movie, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know what else I w I'd like to say about it. Um, I tell you, I, I don't get why Mr. McLaughlin is not directing constantly. Uh, he just got obvious talent, you know what I mean? And, you know, when you hear him talk about these films, it's such a, like, every one of them he approaches with the same amount of gusto and kind of passion, and it's, it's really cool. It sounds like his sets are interesting, nice places to be, you know what I mean? He doesn't sound like a uh, rampant dictator drunk upon power because he has a nice canvas director's chair, you know what I mean? He sounds like, a, well, I mean, I've interviewed the guy. He's, he's a very, very nice and friendly person. And it sounds like he's like that on the work site, too, which is a nice, refreshing change. Um, but it's still even in such a loose environment, at least as far as, you know, t tyranny <laughs> is concerned, or lack thereof, you know, he still puts out a very tight product, and, I don't know, just has a visual flair things that I really enjoy, and, uh, yeah, any more movies that I haven't seen of him, so I'm gonna try to find him for sure, but once again, the movie is The Unsaid, from 2001, starring Andy Garcia, a Vincent Cardheiser, uh, in the two main roles, and, yeah, big thumbs up, good movie, Check it out. Um, watch it with friends. Uh, see what I bet everyone comes away with something just a little bit different, because once again, you know, no two people see the same things or the same thing the same way. Not completely, right? And that's another kind of theme in this movie. You can have two very similar events that have absolutely nothing to do with each other, can still bring people together in a certain way. And those ways might surprise you. So anyway, uh, my rambling's notwithstanding. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more review content coming up in the near future. I have announced my next uh, horror franchise uh, review series, and it's going to be Night of the Living Dead, the George Romero trilogy. Technically, I'm going to also do Land of the Dead, so the quadrilogy. <laughs> quadrilogy? I don't know. However you say it. <clears throat> The four movies, the main ones, and I may or may not do the ones after that, but they were pretty poor, as I recall, so we'll see. I don't really count them, but you know me. I'm a kind of a completionist, yeah. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Until next time, this is Gene Home, just loving finding him some unknown gems. Out.